Just want to let you lot know that if you're watching this clip on the Fozcast YouTube channel, the full episode is now available to watch exclusively on Spotify. And it's free. Come on. Who were your defending idols as a kid growing up? Um, so as we spoke about just before we, we came on, I was a United fan, so part of like Vidic, Ferdinand were like the two. When I, when I started to be more of a, def- a defender, uh, before that, Beckham. Really, any, yeah. any, any United fan growing up was a Beckham fan, and in, that, in that area for sure. Um, I got a good stat yesterday. Who put the uh, crossing for the um, for the goal when Teddy Shogun scored it against I Bayern Munich? I wrote the question, so it's Beckham. It, it was David Beckham, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah, well done, you. Um, we're just talking about styles, right? So this is one of my, my bugbearers is, is you hear this Sean Dyche ball, Brexit ball, it's often tarnished. <laughs> and Sean himself has said in the past, I work with what I've got at my disposal and that's not detrimental to any players, but he's saying, if I try and play Man City and do exactly what they do, he said, that they're going to be better at it. So I yeah. just play with, with what I've got. Now, your game against Newcastle and the, what, 30 Olays when you were popping it around, <laughs> 30 pass kind of um, move led to a goal. It was unbelievable. Yeah. It was absolutely unbelievable. It's unfair for people to say about that about Sean, right? I think I think what he sees is that he wants his team to just be effective. He doesn't see the benefit of us rolling it around the six yard box and just keeping it for keeping it sake. He'd rather us use our strengths, which is our athleticism, getting the ball forward. We've got Calvert Lewin up top, who's a physical beast. I wouldn't want to play against him myself. And then we've got people running off him. So he sees the effect- effectiveness of that over us just keeping the ball on the back. But then in a game like that, we're 2 nil up, confidence is flowing, people yeah, start nice, popping the ball. It, yeah. it's, a nice, it's a nice place to be in, and I've not been in that position many times, especially in the last 18 months. So to be 2 nil up against Newcastle, let's enjoy it and keep the ball. Is, is yeah. it important then? So obviously Daichi again gets labelled with, oh, we only like British players or English players. But how important is it? Because I've been in similar sort of teams to you where I realised that having a British core or a British spine to the team, mm-hmm. people that kind of understand the... The, the lay of the land, basically. Do you know what I mean? The way that it goes. You need people to sort of stand up and be counted. Is that really important to have that British core? I think we probably felt it at Burnley, but it's probably all we could afford at the time. Yeah. Really. It was probably like British players coming through probably the championship rather than signing loads of foreign foreign players on more money. We, yeah. we signed Stephen Defoe, and I think I've heard the gaffer say that he's one of the best players ever signed. So yeah. they tried to push the ball here and there, but we had a real good core of English lads. I remember he had a little belly on him, Stephen Defoe. Stephen Defoe, Defoe. he was some player. Though. Yeah, he was lovely. He, was, he said he, that yeah. on ours. Yeah. Sean did, yeah. didn't he? Oh, yeah. he was so good. The season really? we got um, seventh and got Europa League, Stephen Defoe was unbelievable. Really? Just in, in, a two in the middle, and as you say, he had a belly on him, he maybe couldn't do very well, but he, <laughs> Lovely he, he, little he, would belly. Just, he would just dictate games for us all the time. And wherever he was, I'd just pass him the ball and he'd just run the game for us. Uh, well, I'm going to move on quickly. I need to ask that about that, actually. The, the, the season Burnley got seventh. Um, for me, I think a team like Burnley getting a Europa League spot is a curse. Because you have to start back early. You have to start back in June, don't you? Normally, yeah. pre-season training starts about the 4th of July or something like that. You have to start back weeks earlier than everybody else because you've got all the qualifying stages. And then you're going to be playing Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, pretty much relentlessly for the first half of the season, at least. Yeah. And if you're a squad like Burnley, you need to have two starting 11s, don't you? Yeah, and we were... Our, basically, our pre-season games were qualifying games for Europa League. Mm-hmm. We had three qualifying rounds. I think we had the toughest draw you could ever really get. We had Aberdeen away, and we could have ended up like the team in Finland yeah, or yeah, anywhere. Yeah. We had Aberdeen away, which was tough. <clears throat> and then we had um, Istanbul, Basak Zahir. Oh, it's never had, nice to go out there, is it? And they had like Adebayo and Klishi and people out there. And then we got um, Olympiakos in the next round. So we were just getting like the worst draws ever. Yeah. Um, and then we'd always travel to like Greece on a Thursday, land back early hours Friday morning. And then we'd be like down in Southampton yeah. away on the Sunday. So you're just traveling non stop. Is that, is that the bit? I think this is the bit that people don't really see a lot of, to be fair, is the mental fatigue of constantly traveling, constantly on the go. And it's like, oh, there's another game in three days' time. And I remember people used to say, to me who have you got in two weeks time I'm like I don't know I ain't got a clue <laughs> I'm just trying to make it to Saturday but it's true though isn't it <laughs> yeah. you literally live week to week game to game don't you because otherwise if you get too far ahead of yourself it's just you, you just get boggled with it all yeah you don't want to get carried away thinking, oh we've got them in two weeks maybe that's a good chance for a result I think it's always looking at the next games or for us now at the weekend it's Burnley um, but you're right in them in them situations the travel just takes it out of your body so yeah. much I, I didn't even play some of them games or I'd maybe play like 20 minutes I remember just like waking up on that Friday morning early hours I was thinking I'm knackered and I've got to get back on the train again tomorrow off playing and fly down to Southampton and play another game completely take all doing it out that with the family as well you know with yeah, fa- yeah, family yeah. as well it's, life, you know, as well. life <clears throat> life has to go on as well but it's, it's a double edged sword isn't it because you said that about a curse Ben but Tell that to West Ham fans. Yeah, true, you know, yeah, they've yeah. had the best 
yeah, best kind yeah, of, of course, experience yeah. of their football life. Yeah. Absolutely no doubt. So you don't want it to get in the way of progression. Even that but, though, right? Even that, yeah. And I'll be dead honest with fans here, yeah. Even if you're if you're Burnley that's got into Europe or West Ham, I remember Birmingham did it years ago, right? Until you get to the latter stages of that competition, yeah, yeah. for the players, it's kind of just another game. Get through it. You don't really think about it as a European adventure or a European game. Until you start to get to like the quarterfinals, last 16, semi, then you think, oh, yeah, this is this is getting juicy now. Yeah, it's like most cups, isn't it? It's not like yeah. the League Cup. But early, early on, it's just like it's just another game. Yeah. Maybe give the lads some minutes and try and get them like fit early season and before you know it you're in like the quarters and you're like oh we've chance to go take this seriously now, yeah. Now, yeah so it comes around quite quickly yeah. so you just pick up a few wins um talking of uh that season with burnley um i want to talk about being in teams that have always been sort of like relegation threatened um you know what it's like playing for a burnley even last season with an everton it's a battle every single game is a battle it's kind of like you win one and it's the best feeling in the world just how hard is it when you're playing and you're in that relegation fight and trying to keep others enthusiastic and upbeat and going. Um, it, it's tough, isn't it? I think it's the day-to-day -day stuff, which is the toughest. The games I was always all right with. It's like maybe coming in the day after a game, yeah. after you've been beaten, you're like back in the building Miserable. again. And it's like everyone's at breakfast with like their heads down and like muttering away with each other. And especially when things aren't going great, yeah. it's always like that. Not because you're trying to be like acid about everyone. It's just like everyone's a bit down, sit down, breakfast, talk about the game, but things aren't going well. Um, so it's nice to be in a place where you've had a few wins and you go into training. It's like everyone's live. Buzzing a bit. Buzz, wants buzzing to around. talk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You want to watch Sky Sports. Yeah, yeah you get back on Sky. again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but do you see? Do you notice a change in players? Then do you? Because I've I've always seen, like I said, I've been similar to you. I've been in relegation fights and threatened and all that kind of stuff. And you you see players kind of withdrawing a little bit, don't you? And getting really quiet and insular. Yeah, it does, and then it can feel clicky. I don't think it is always clicky, but it can feel it because yeah. everyone does go a bit quieter and a bit inside themselves. So then maybe they just sit with like their two mates that they usually speak to, and then they're speaking about the game. But it seems it. like it's divide, yeah. then, and it's, and it's like them versus us it, almost. And it's not intentional, but yeah. I think that's just because the, the the negativity around losing football matches can create that a little bit. Yeah, it does. It takes over your life. It's so culture, that's it. The important the culture and having the right characters in there, though, yeah. isn't it? Like you say, having experienced players of maybe a British core. Um, but there's things obviously that Sean will do to to kind of galvanize gaffer's day um one thing i wanted to ask about is this spin the wheel um so <laughs> who's still doing it now yeah yeah is he who was telling us about it was it ben me i think it was sean deitch wasn't he, he yeah, was telling us about it. yeah it sort of mellowed though in recent years when i first joined burnley it was used to be crazy like people were getting spun for the most ridiculous things ever like um if you were if you were driving unsafely on the road but it wasn't always unsafe like you didn't indicate in the lane with your club tracksuit on oh, that's a spin so then like you have a jury who, who would say that's a spin so like there was like car school so someone in the passenger seat would video so maybe not indicate across the oh, lane that's or, you know like that's just, that's just, that it, it was literally just the most ridiculous things you could find because then the spins on there were like elvis um what, an Elvis impression? An Elvis impression. Charlie Taylor had Elvis about six weeks in a row. He ran out of songs to sing. <laughs> oh. it, was, it used to be relentless. Now it's like, there's still a few awkward ones, but it's not as bad as it used to be. Um, I think it's a good thing I do. I think it's good for the young lads to, it's kind of, it brings them out of their shell more, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. It's like the Christmas do. It will yeah. bring them out of the shell a bit. But I think he's not always young lads. It's actually, some of the older lads hate it more yeah, than the younger sure, lads. Yeah, for sure, mate, yeah. Yeah, yeah, some of the older lads really hate it. And you're like, you've got, got them up there doing like zoo animal noises. Or... <laughs> what about initiation <laughs> songs? Did you have to do one? So I did one, but I was under, under Frank, on the Frank Lampard. And I did one in, I remember preseason in Washington. But there's about 20 people. They had a load of new staff at the same time and everyone had to do it. So That's I just got up early, bad. got mine out of the way. And Individually? Then, individually, yeah. What song was it? Um, ain't no mind high enough. I'm crap with lyrics. I'm awful with lyrics. My missus <laughs> winds me up all the time because I'm just don't know the words. Make your own bits up. <laughs> yeah, it's just what we all. Did you have to stand in. there with your phone? <laughs> no, no, no. That's the worst bit. People stand muttering while. Oh, it's horrible. It's, it's just uncomfortable. Yeah, it is. Yeah, they I do look, that so that they ain't got to see the crowd. Yeah. And, they just, and then they just talk the words rather than actually sing yeah. the words. It just doesn't feel. You nice got to give it a little bit of a go at least. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. We hope you enjoyed this clip of the Fozcast. If you would like to watch the full episode, it is now available exclusively on Spotify for free.